Doug, you were the first question. You asked me to put it aside. Go for it. Doug, that's one from Bob. Thank you, Peter. Of course, my comment is about the gun control issue. And like many, Tony, thank you for showing up. We all understand that you voted against that abomination of a bill. And we thank you, I thank you for that. I know, Tony, you and I served together, seems like a lifetime ago, but uh, I know where you come from on that issue as well. My comment revolves around where do we go from here forward? Because as I look around this room, I see people of all age groups. The real neat thing for me, from my perspective, is I see young people. Young people, young men with children, families, wives. As a father of five young children, it's my duty to protect my, my kids and my family and provide for them. And what this law essentially did was it took away my choices to protect my kids because, as we all understand, a deranged individual broke the law. And our solution in this state was to pass yet another law. And I'm disappointed that Quisling People who are above 50, they may remember who Quisling was from World War II in Norway. Our Quisling did not show up here, and this is the second time he has not showed up in the northeast corner when he was invited. And he can't feel these questions. Because there are two reasons to vote for that bill. You believe in it, which I have serious problems with or you did it for political expediency so you could get reelected. And in my opinion, from my perspective, as someone who has taken the oath to support and defend the Constitution, as someone who has five young children and a wife to protect, <coughs> as someone who is a descendant of a founding father of this country, and the history that I look back to in my own family, I am disgusted with that type of individual. And I would hope that everyone in this state can understand that come January 1st, when most of the provisions of this bill, this law, go into effect, it will turn many of us who are good law-abiding citizens into felons. And here's why. The other side, Mr. McKinney, will tell you, oh, we put in a grandfather clause, as long as you register what you own, you can keep it. That may be true, but I was one of those people who stayed up all night long watching the proceedings on the Connecticut network. And I saw senator, state senator after state senator and state Representative after state representative get up and grab the microphone and say, we're only agreeing to have a grandfather clause in this bill so we can pass it immediately. But don't get too comfortable with owning these things because we can revisit this law at any time and take them away. So from my perspective, as someone who has served in the legislature, who has taken the oath and the oath is for life. That when I have people who are supposedly in leadership and authority positions that tell me that my compliance to a law will actually lead me down the path of being in the laws, in the crosshairs of the law, it's put me into a no-win situation. And it's put every single one of us in a no-win situation come January 1st. We comply with the law. As soon as they change it and they promise that they want to, they're going to use our compliance against us. If we don't comply with the law and we take our chances, we're felons. And I know there's no question in here 
Hi, just because, yeah. just that. because <laughs> Mr. McKinney has decided not to show up again. But I would like to thank you three for being here tonight and taking time out of your schedule and meeting with us. And I just hope that you, as you move forward in your political careers, and everyone that's here in this room tonight, understand that this state has put us in a no-win situation. And we haven't even discussed the economic issues that are involved. And I know for me, from my perspective, and I'll close with this, as someone who has the history here with my family in this, in this state, and my parents, who right now live and work on a farm that dates back to 1816, in an area that our family settled. And my families are, my, my parents are approaching their 70s. I cannot possibly leave my family and my land. And that puts me, Summer, Amber, David, Taylor, and Phoebe, my five children, in a very, very dangerous environment. And I'm not even talking about facing criminals. I'm talking about facing the law. <coughs> Thank you.